Hey everybody, I'm Mr. Hall. Now, you, for those of you who have not met me, you can put a face with my name. Um, but these are going to be recorded lectures for this class. Um, these are some sociology lectures. And what I've decided to do is to go over the main points in these chapters. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because, I mean, let's face it, who wants to sit through 45 minutes to an hour long when it comes to lectures. I'm going to take about 20 minutes or so uh, and go through the most important things in each chapter. Um, and I'm going to do these videos in 10 minute increments because they upload faster to YouTube that way. So that'll help out as far as getting it online quicker for you guys. So um, first chapter I'm going to do is sociological perspective or as I just call it theory, um, because that's basically what it is. And whether you have a textbook where it has it together with research or separate, I'm just gonna go over the theory part of it at this point in this video. But so first of all, when it comes to sociology, most people don't realize really what it is. Um, most people I ask, they say, no, I have no idea what it is, or, oh, is that like psychology? I tell them, well, they study some of the same things psychology does, but their approaches are very different. They're both sciences, but the approaches are very different. Um, you know, with sociology, you know, the definition, you know, we study human interaction in society. And it's something that's very important. I think more people should realize just how important sociology is because it can be so beneficial to our world if more people would just take the time to understand it um you know we talk about everything from race and ethnicity to gender to stratification politics and economics which i'm not personally big on but again it's something else that we study we study everything so you know, sociology is really important and i hope that you guys will take that same mindset into this class excuse me you know and um well, the first thing you know talking about sociology you know, there's a question, a few questions I want to ask you guys. You know, so why and how do people in groups interact with each other? That's a question we ask as sociologists. You know, why would we want to know that? Well, we want to know that because it teaches us, you know, and that's the thing. We always need to be learning, and that helps us grow as people, Helps can help society grow. Unfortunately, not enough people do that. But it's something that's very beneficial to society. You know, when we study how society is structured, it lets us know where we are and also where everybody else is. And it can give us an idea of, okay, well, I'm at this level and I want to make it to level X or level B one day. And that can give you an idea of maybe what you might have, general idea of what you might have to go through. So there's that. Um, and also, you know, when you live in a certain area, and you interact with people in that area, most likely it's gonna be similar people to you. So like in a very rural area, like the one I live in, while people are different, a way of life is very similar. So, you know, there's not really a lot of exposure to different things every single day, as far as in-person, face-to-face. Um, but, I see, lost my train of thought. I do that all the time. Just so you know, if you ever do that, it's okay. Um, but when we interact with people, you know, in our same group, in our same area, it's going to be, it's going to be very similar experiences. Whereas if we go to somewhere like an urban area, let's say, instead of being here where I'm at in Springfield, let's say that, you know, I go to Chicago or even just somewhere like Louisville here in Kentucky. And it's going to be vastly different. Urban areas are very different from rural areas. You meet a lot more different people. And the way of life and the norms are just so different. So when we learn about groups and people and learn about interaction, it teaches us how, how we might need to interact with separate groups of people when we go to certain areas, certain types of areas. So that's, you know, another big thing whenever it comes to, you know, we, while we ask that question, something that's very important. Um, another one, how are, or how do people deal with conflict and change? Um, me, I'm somebody that does not like conflict. I don't like change. 
I like change to be, I don't like change. I like things to be a certain way. I like my routine. I like things to be, I guess, have normalcy to them. So whenever things change up on me, not a big fan of it. Um, as I've grown older, I've realized that, hey, you know, I might not like it, but it's beneficial in the long run. It's just something you have to get used to, like this pandemic. You know, not being able to be, or, well, some people still choose to be within six feet of each other, but trying to be six feet away from people and always wearing a mask, you know, it's very different. And, you know, do I like wearing a mask? No, but it's what needs to be done health-wise. And, you know, it's a fight in this pandemic. And, you know, so change is not fun, but it's something that is beneficial. And sometimes it just has to be done. And then you think about conflict. Um, I'm somebody that avoids conflict at all costs. I just, I don't like drama. I don't like to get into it with people. I'm somebody that can get aggravated really easily. But when it comes to actually saying something to somebody, getting into con actual conflict, you had to push me really far to get me to that point. So if it ever gets to that point, it's bad. Um, you know, I think about back whenever I was younger, my sister, my that's closest to me in age, uh, there was just different things that she would do that would aggravate me in different ways that she would use me. Um, and then one day, you know, I just held it in over and over and over. And one day I just finally let it out and it wasn't good. The result as far as um, how I made her feel was very, very bad, but I'd let it build up because I'd avoided that conflict. But I'm glad we had that conflict because now we're closer than we've ever been. I mean, we're best friends. I mean, I can walk into a room and just start doing some crazy dance move or just say something like, what it do, shoddy? You know, something silly like that, and it's fine. You know, like, she laughs and tells me I'm an idiot, but she does the same thing to, to me. So, sometimes conflict is good. You know, it might not be, you might not be beneficial right away, but in the long run, it helps, um, usually. <laughs> can't guarantee it always will help but um, usually there is some good coming out of conflict but those are some questions that we ask whenever it comes to sociology um, as far as groups of people we study from very small groups to also very large groups so we study dyads which is two people we study triads which is three people we study large groups which could be you know all of the states in the southern U.S. or like all Latinos in the United States or all females in the United States, you know, something like that. Then we study entire nations and then the global society, the world as a whole. Um, and one group I do want to mention is a triad. It's a group of three people. Now, some, book, some textbooks will try to argue that Dyads are more unstable than a triad, but that's false. Triads are more unstable. You might say, okay, well, why would a group of three people be unstable? Well, that's because of the fact that at some point, one of those people is always going to feel left out. They're going to feel like they're the tag along. It's like if you go out, if you go um, out to dinner with a couple, you feel kind of left out. You feel like you're the third wheel. So at some point in a triad, somebody's always going to feel like a third wheel. Um, and uh, also, not only that, but there are times where there's going to be tension, and it, it can, it's not just going to be from one group member. It can be from all group members. You know, members A and B from this group can go hang out and see, not invite C, and they could be jealous. Or B and C could go hang out and not invite A, and then A could be jealous. Like, there's always going to be some type of tension. I'm not saying that if you're, you're, <laughs> you're in a group with two best friends, you know, you're always three hang three of you hanging out. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm just saying be cognizant of that because there's always uh, can be a downside. And also there's the fact that, you know, this is a very simple um, example. You know, if uh, there's this married couple and one of them goes and has an affair, obviously that's a triad that's most of the time not going to work out. It's not going to have very good, um, I guess, results, not a very good ending. So... That's a very simple way to think of as far as a group of three not working out. Again, I'm not saying that you should never be in groups of three in any capacity. I'm just saying that, excuse me, just saying that you should just be cognizant, be careful. Just pay, pay really good attention to things. Uh, all right, I'm going to stop this video right here and do the next one for this chapter.